Hi, this is the second video on a tutorial I've been doing for you guys. It's been a while since I made a video, and um, kind of since it made you guys wait so long, I'm gonna give you a lot of information on this one, a lot of useful information. This is a computer, Dodge JTEC computer out of a 1999 Dodge Durango. Um, these have been one of the most popular computers for quite a while. Really hard part numbers to find. This one here is a 56040147. Um, I've pulled it out of the case. <laughs> these usually come in these aluminum cases here. This is the style of this computer, the JTEC, Dodge JTEC. <clears throat> That's the potting material. It's a pain in the ass to get out. I've taken about two days here now to get this computer cleaned so we can use it. On, uh, I was showing you how to rebuild them, the common failures of these. And after we go over all that, um, I'm actually going to go through and we're going to reverse engineer this whole computer. Go through completely every function of it. We're going to inject cam and crank sensor signal into it and uh, fire all the coil, fire the coil and driver and uh, all the injectors. Uh, build a bench top test unit for it so you make sure the, it's completely working if you're going to be rebuilding these. So <clears throat> on these units, the failures that usually happen on these usually a no start um, you get a on your dashboard um, it'll say no bus in your dash it'll be written across your digital uh, your digital mileage will blank out and it'll say no bus that's usually that's almost always caused by a failed computer um, the no bus issue the first the first things that usually fail that causes a no bus issue no bus no communication either the vehicle is not running um, usually the vehicle will heat up get hot stall and the next day after it cools off it'll start up and run again that's some of the symptoms of these issues that I'm going to show you how to to repair right now I'm not going to show you how to solder in this video this one I'm just going to show you the parts that cause the failures because most people that are watching these kind of already do know how to solder <clears throat> so later on I'll do some uh, soldering tutorials too but first off on the front of the board you know this stuff usually this whole thing is encased in the potting material you know on the last video I kind of showed you how to start to get it uh, cleaned out of there um, later on I'll show you a couple of tools that work really good for that also so <clears throat> after you take the cover off the front of it uh, right hand side this thing right here that I have the uh, LED the laser pointing on right now that is called a step up transformer usually these things are almost completely unsoldered because of bad soldering um, been heating up, cooled off so much, solder moves around and it, it completely loses contact. <clears throat> I'll try and zoom in on it here for you. Okay, it's that one right there that has the upside down TDK on it. If you can look on the bottom, this one's already been repaired, soldered, because usually if you could look at that how both there's actually two legs on this side two legs over here and it's the same on top you can actually see here um, when these are repaired everybody solders those two legs together um, original from the factory they are not soldered together but doing it this way th th that contact goes to the same point so you can solder these actually together so you don't have to worry about bridging that there um, it actually helps a lot having a little bit thicker solder on there because it will never heat up and you'll never lose contact again. So when you pull these apart, that's the first thing you want to do when you open up the top case. You want to clean out around this area, clean it up, and then solder each point on there. You'll actually see when you open it up, you'll, you'll be like, where'd the solder go? There'll actually be no solder left on those contacts at all. So that's that's a really big uh, issue with these JTEC computers is is that unit that step up transformer. It takes 12 volts in and it it steps it up to like 22, 23 volts. <clears throat> that's what that unit does. So in the last video, obviously I showed you <clears throat> this uh, 
driver up here. That is your ignition coil driver. We already went over that one in the last video. If you, you know, really want to be thorough, um, when you open these up, either replace that or at least get in there and resolder the legs to the board because that's usually why that driver fails is the solder goes bad and it over and it heats up because a bad connection ends up burning it up burning the board too so move to the left here <clears throat> this next one here you want to look at this one is your voltage regulator driver same thing you want to either replace it make sure you got good solder on the legs of it the only IC chip on this side, you'll see one, two, three. You see this top one here. One of the, the these is a really bad failure. These also, if you have an IAC issue, um, your idle air control motor not working, this chip is probably almost definitely unsoldered. You know, it's the bad soldering on it. You want to go through and reflow this whole chip clean it out you know really check in there like I say these chips barely ever fail almost all your repairs on this computer are just gonna be resoldering this board so that board there is your idle air control motor control the IC for it resolder that definitely too you really don't have to worry about anything else on the front of this style board because <clears throat> nothing else really fails in here now on the back side of this, let me get a good shot for you. I'll show you guys how to open these in another video also. Kind of just wanted to go over and give you this is like the gold mine of the JTEC repairs because these these are these are all the failure points. This is the only things you ever have to do to these to rebuild them, repair them. So on the back side, this is uh like the number one failure on any Dodge computer, uh, any of the styles, all of them, is this right here. This is the EEPROM. This is what stores all your information, your VIN, mileage, what your vehicle is, everything about your vehicle, what makes it a Durango, what makes it a Dakota. It's all stored in here. Of And again, bad solder, terrible soldering on this chip. Um, on the back of these boards... <clears throat> See that square right there? That actually, when this is in, that actually is your heat sink. This whole board is supposed to be the heat sink for these chips in the back of this. That's what this aluminum case, that's why they went to this. To try and keep this board cool from them failing because they're, they're failing so much. And that's why. And some, some guys, some idiots made a great idea of if you ever get a rebuild and you got a big hole cut in the back here. That is like the worst thing that you could possibly do with these computers. One, they're cutting a big circle out of here so they don't have to take them out of this potting material. And all that does is destroy this heat sink. It's no longer a heat sink, it's just a case. So don't be lazy and cut a big hole in the back of this. I'll show you guys how to get them out of here without cutting big holes and destroying this case. It's, it's just a, a terrible way of doing things. So on these these chips, um, if you get a code PO601, it is this chip right here. This causes that fail. This chip that fails causes that code P0601 right there. The EEPROM. So almost all your all your uh, computers you hook up to them, you get no data. You can't communicate with the computer. First thing you go to is this chip right here. Definitely this EEPROM. Also, when you open up the back, um, that step-up transformer powers this chip right here, and these have terrible soldering on them too. So when you open up the back and get them open and cleaned up, definitely just you might as well just reflow the whole board, resolder. But if you're in a hurry and just want to repair it, replace the EEPROM or resolder it. You can resolder it first and see if your code's gone and see if it communicates. Which nine times out of ten, it'll communicate after you solder this. And then uh, go through resolder this. These few uh, legs right down here will be completely unsoldered. So <clears throat> that's pretty much it on this style JTEC. Like I said, that's anything that any of the companies do to rebuild these. That's all the information. That's 
like the gold mine information for Dodge computers. There'd be a lot of people upset that I've given this information out. So, um, next one, next videos, <clears throat> we're going to be rebuilding these Ford IDMs. Uh, the 110s, 100s, 120s, they're all the, well, they're not the same, but the, the failures on them are pretty much the same. So we're going to do these. We're going to try and keep all these videos going, but please subscribe and like the videos. And if you can, you know, don't make a donation if it's 50 cents, anything, you know, just support the channel and I'll keep this going. We'll keep them going. We'll completely reverse engineer this whole board, this whole thing. We'll make a test unit for it. I'll show you how you can actually change the part numbers of this computer. So I can change this computer from a Durango into something with a four cylinder in it, a Dakota or something. I'll teach you guys how to actually change the part numbers of this computer and make it work completely fine, just like it was purchased from the store like that. So please subscribe and watch my other videos. Thanks.